so girls here we will study the ts section of a needle okay of a foliage leaf as you can see here now in the long shoot we have this dwarf shoot and finally this dwarf shoot they have been uh, transformed into the needle the foliage leaf or the needle so each of this single needle here we will study on the TS section of a needle or of a leaf of pinus. Now, the foliage leaf of pinus is commonly called the needle. Okay, it is it exhibits extreme xerophytic characters, including the reduction in the surface area. As you can see, the surface area of the needle is very much reduced. It has become like a needle. Uh, the that is one of the xerophytic characters with which which i will uh, explain later on on the xerophytic characters of the needle so the transverse section of the needle it shows a variable outline okay it shows a variable outline either circular circular in the case of those monofoliar species if you remember mono uh, monofoliar species they have only one needle okay only the single one here now in this case as you can see in pinus uh, gerardiana this one you can see we have three three needles okay from each dwarf shoot now this is a trifolier tri meaning three so in case of monofolia we will see circular outline and in case of um in case of uh, bifolia we will see semicircular just like a semicircle but here this is the case of a triangular outline why because this is the case of those uh, tri-lobed species a trifolial species which form three needles so each needle it will show a triangular outline however the internal structure is almost similar okay in all the species the internal structure is similar except the outline it depends if it is monofolia or difolia or pentafolia like that so the internal structure of a typical trifoliate species for example in pinus roxburghi we will study this one it shows these features the first one that is the epidermis now the outermost single layer okay it is single layered here the epidermis as you can see clearly that they are single layered and heavily cutilarized okay meaning they are covered with a very thick cuticle so it the epidermis has a heavy cuticularis tangentially tangentially elongated thick walled cells you can see here the cells they are very thick the cuticle and uh, you can also see that it bears numerous stomata. You can see here the stomata present on one or all the sides. You can see this side also stomata. We have this side also. In all the sides, we have numerous stomata. And the development of stomata here is said to be haplochilic type. Okay, Haplochilic type it means that the stomatal initial okay the stomatal initial they give rise to only these two guard cells they will give rise to only two guard cells whereas the subsidiary cells they are formed by the modification of this epidermis okay by the epidermal cells they get modified into subsidiary cells whereas the initial cells here will give rise only to the two guard cells that is that type of stomata is said to be haplochilic type so here the subsidiaries uh, okay the guard cells they are deeply sunken okay they are deeply sunken as uh, sunken meaning uh, being it's like being submerged in water okay they are deeply sunken and they are overtopped by six to nine subsidiary cells okay there are six to nine subsidiary cells okay which overtop these uh, guard cells and this stomata it opens toward towards the inner side into a substomatal cavity here this small cavity is known as a substomatal cavity the front 
cavity of the stomata here, the front cavity of the stomata is typically filled with a whitish or dark material. Okay, so we have the substomatal cavity and the stomatal cavity here, which is filled with dark or whitish material. So next here, just below the epidermis, okay, we have the hypodermis and the uh, the epidermis is followed by a two to three layers here you can see it's two to three layers and also thick walled sclerenchymatous okay sclerenchymatous hypodermis that means the hypodermis is made up of sclerenchymatous cells and it forms a uniform compact layer you can see here it forms a uniform compact layer but it is interrupted by the uh, it is interrupted only beneath the stomata you can see here it forms a uniform layer from here to here you can see this um, sclerenchymatous hypodermis but here it is interrupted by the presence of the stomata then again it continues interrupted by stomata so it forms a uniform layer compact layer which is interrupted only beneath the stomata cavity here beneath the stomata and next we have the mesophyll okay this is the mesophyll now you can see here in the mesophyll it the mesophyll it lies just below the hypodermis now uh, it lies just below the hypodermis here so this uh, mesophyll it is not differentiated into palisade and spongy parenchyma okay the cell instead the cells of mesophyls they are arranged in horizontal layers you can see so it is not differentiated into palisade and spongy parenchyma but they are arranged in horizontal layers and they are polygonal you can see here they are polygonal poly meanings means many uh, sites okay it has many sites each cell here mesophyll tissue the cells of the mesophyll tissue they are arranged in horizontal layers and polygonal also parenchymatous and you can see here they are filled with the discoid chloroplast inside okay discoid meaning just like a disc shaped okay shaped like a disc so they are filled with a discoid chloroplast and the cells they have internal ridges on the walls okay projecting into the cell lumen okay they project into a cell lumen now meaning the interior of a vessel okay the central part here so there are about two to five or usually three you can see here usually three in this case also we can see three but sometimes there are about two to five okay resin ducts present in the region of the mesophyll they are present in the region of the mesophyll tissue and they are usually situated in the corners of the needle you can see they are situated in the corners in the three corners of this triangular loop and each resin duct is lined with a thin wall you can see here a thin wall secretory epithelial cells okay surrounded by a sheath of fibers a sheath it's like a covering a sheath meaning a covering okay so each resin duct remember it is lined with thin walled secretory epithelial cells surrounded by sheath of fibers and just below the mesophyll tissue now what you can see is the presence of the endodermis the endodermis here as you can see it is single layered it is single layered and consists of barrel shaped okay consists of barrel shaped relatively thick walled cells and these cells just remember girls that these cells they possess casparian thickenings in their radial cells casparian thickenings that is a band of cell wall material okay so that means the endodermis it possess casparian thickenings in the radial walls and just below the endodermis you can see clearly here the pericycle the cells inside the endodermis and outside the vascular bundle this that means 
inside the endodermis and outside this vascular bundle meaning in between this is the pericycle but the pericycle as you can see here it is multi-layered and consists of three kinds of cells so girls here the as i said that the pericycle okay it has uh, different layers three kinds of cells actually it has three kinds of cells and it is multi-layered so let us take a look at those three kinds of cells the first one the first type of cells which are present in the pericycle they are um they are parenchymatous cells okay that means most of this uh, pericycle it is made up of parenchymatous cells these are thin walled living cells okay parenchymatous cells you know that means the living cells and these living cells they are filled with starch grains the second types of cells which are present in this you can see here some of the uh, living cells okay which are filled with starch grains and <clears throat> the next type of cells which are present girls just remember they are the albuminous cells albuminous cells also they are the living parenchymatous cells but these are filled with protein okay they are filled with proteins as well as starch grains and the third type is the tracheidal cells the tracheidal cells here they are thin walled uh, lignified cells okay they are lignified and they are uh, with bordered pits meaning the bordered pits are present in the tracheidal cell besides the above three types okay that is the parenchymatous cells the albu albuminous cells and the tracheidal cells what are present here can you see girls this one in the middle here like this like this just like a t just like a t uh, letter a letter t okay so besides the above three types of cells some sclerenchymatous cells they form a t-shaped girdle okay just like a belt here in the form of a t letter t so they form a t-shaped girdle in between the two vascular bundles and the albuminous cells lying beside the phloem okay and the tracheidal cells beside the xylem you can see here the albuminous cells they lie beside this phloem whereas the uh, tracheidal cell it lies beside the xylem this part is the xylem these are the phloem right so the albuminous cells they lie beside the phloem and the tracheidal cell beside the xylem they form transfusion tissues remember this girls these they form transfusion tissues meaning these tissues they function as conducting system okay they form as conducting system between the vascular bundles and the mesophyll okay they they form they function as conducting system you can see this side also we have uh, we have the here we have the albuminous as well as the tracheidal cells so girls now let us uh, study the central portion here that is the vascular bundle okay so the vascular bundle as you can see here they are two in number remember we have studied here in the in case of a trifoliar species where we have three uh, needles here so one one needle in one one needle you see here because there are six vascular bundles so in a in one needle there will be uh, two vascular numbers so uh, vascular bundles so the vascular numbers bundles they are usually uh, two in numbers and but you know that in case of monofoliar species like in pinus monophylla then in that case only one vascular bundle there may be one or more it depends upon different species of pinus and if you take a look at the vascular bundles again they are conjoined right they are collateral and due to the presence of a cambium they are open and also endarch why because the xylem is towards the center of the pith and uh, and this uh, phloem is towards the periphery so this type is referred to as endarch and the two bundles they are oriented slightly below okay with the slightly obliquely with the xylem towards the 
lower side, that is the adaxial side, and the phloem towards the abaxial side, the upper side. So the secondary growth in the leaf also may occur, but that secondary growth is not in the overall structure of a leaf. That secondary growth it will occur only in the, uh, it is usually occur only in the vascular bundles. Okay, only here and how how that secondary growth occur in the older leaf is that after the secondary growth what happen the protoxylum will get crushed okay the protoxylum is partly crushed in case of mature needles whereas the primary xylem it consists of radial row of tracheidal uh, tracheids or tracheidal cells whereas the secondary xylem it uh, the secondary xylem here it has tracheids interspersed with the medullary rays you that is in the case of the secondary growth okay and you will see that the phloem it consists of the sieve cells arranged in rows these sieve cells they are arranged in rows alternating with the rows of the parenchymatous rays so those are some of the secondary growth which occur only in the vascular bundle.